Hey, it's Greg Otten here, and this is an episode from the very first season of the Maritime Gardening Podcast. I've been doing this for a number of years now, and you can listen to the current season at my podcast website, uh, maritimegardening.com. It's completely free. Uh, but I thought I'd put the older episodes, uh, start putting the older episodes up on my YouTube channel for people that just prefer to consume online content in that way. So we'll give that a try, and if people seem to be enjoying it, I'll keep doing it. And if you really enjoy it, you can go to my website, maritimegardening.com, and listen to any one of the episodes I've ever done or the current season. So have a listen. Thanks for tuning in to the very first episode of the MaritimeGardening.com podcast. Uh, I'm Dave Doggett. I'm more of the tech guy behind the scenes. Um, ended up connecting with uh, Mr. Greg Otten. And uh, basically, just a little quick history, MaritimeGardening.com started out uh with the intent of an online community, a discussion forum type environment. And uh, while it did work to some degree, um, I think technology sort of caught up to it. Uh, it was very difficult to capture the attention of people from social media like Facebook and get them to interact on the, on the discussion forum. So um, after meeting Greg and we've, uh, we've come up to this, uh, this place where we feel that this audio podcast is the way to go, and Greg is uh, enthusiastic about this, and and uh, so we've we've gotten together, and we're going to give this a try. So we appreciate you tuning in and listening. Um, and uh, if you want to check out the show notes for this particular episode, uh, you can just go to maritimegardening.com, or you can go to maritimegardening.com/slash zero zero one for episode one. So. I'm sitting here with Greg right now, and we're just going to work through uh, what we had in mind for the first episode and, and see where we build from there. So how are you doing today, Greg? Great. Excellent. Um, so gr after meeting you, you know, it's very obvious that we share a similar passion for fishing and the outdoors. Uh, while I'm, I do come from a line of, uh, actually both my grandfathers were green thumbs, grew a lot of their own food and while I was interested in that and I enjoyed eating it at their houses growing up as a child I never really I don't know if I had the opportunity or took the time or maybe that's what we're going to get into but you know how did you um, how did you keep that interest I assume that it's something that goes back to when you were a child yeah I grew up uh, you know we, we had a, a house in the suburbs and uh, I, father had a garden in the backyard it probably was about I don't know 20 feet by 20 feet maybe it was larger than that I know maybe 25 by 25 anyway he grew the typical things that people would have grown this would have been back in the 70s and, and 80s um, you know potatoes carrots tomatoes uh, Swiss chard uh, typical things like that and I, I always remembered having that you know access to that uh, as a child I could come home from school with a you know a I remember going out into the garden with a salt shaker and eating these fresh tomatoes and pulling carrots out of the ground and eating them and just seeing, you know, the thing develop over over time and it really stuck with me. And, uh, you know, uh, I left home and went to university and lived in apartments and really got away from all of that. I was too busy having fun. And uh, eventually, you know, I, I got married and got a house and the first thing I did when I got a house was I wanted to put a garden in. I just had this need and I put something small in and it worked pretty good and then the next year I wanted it to be a bit, well, okay, I grew a couple things but I want to grow some more things. So I grew some more things and now I've got a garden that's about uh, 2,500 square feet and I could, I'd probably be thinking about making it larger but it's surrounded by a four foot high galvanized fence that uh, uh, it would be difficult to move, uh, so I'm sort of constrained for now, but that will probably change. It seems to be bigger is always better. There's always things, there's still things, I'm planning it out this year, and I realize there's things I want to plant that I don't have room for, even right. with all that room. Right. Um, so, yeah, it was just, it was something I grew up with, and something I got back to, because as soon as I had land, 
I thought, well, I want this. Why would I grow grass on my land? I want this ground, this land working for me. I like food. being outside. I don't like going. And that's the other thing. I always went to a gymnasium. I always worked out. And as soon as I got that garden, I stopped going to the gym. Right. Right there. I didn't need to work out. I'd be out doing something all the time. Right. Uh, be out doing something on my property or whatever. And uh, mm-hmm. I haven't gone to a gym since. Nice. And you, you look like you uh, go to a gym. Well, gee, thanks. <laughs> no, you know, you are, you do look like you get plenty of exercise. So I looked better when I went to a job. I was more ripped. Okay, well, I was then. younger, I didn't have kids. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you, you've you always, since you've had your own property and space for, for having a garden, you've had a garden and it's something that you work at regularly. Yeah, but yeah. not, uh, you know, it's not, this time of year is probably the busiest time because mm-hmm. you're putting things in. And seedlings have to be watered, um, but I have a type of gardening I do. We'll talk about that later. Sure. Um, but the whole point of designing your garden is you design it to take care of itself. Um, from about you know late June for the rest of the gardening season, I barely touch a hose. My garden takes care of itself. Nice. Um, so five to ten minutes a day is really all I spend in my garden. I spend most of my time building gardens for other people. Perfect. Um, um, so, um, I really don't have a lot of time to work on my own. I'll, I'll come home and go in my garden and whatever needs, you know, 10, 15 minutes, five minutes, some days, some days I don't even, and any day I don't want to go, I don't. Right. And it's uh, not necessarily going to fall apart. And the world's not going to end. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I think that's a big part of it, at least with myself and probably a lot of other people listening is, you know, nobody feels like they have time for anything nowadays. You know, people are in a rush to go here and there you know kids are in all kinds of activities there's no time for anything you're lucky if you see each other for an hour through the day but basically what you're saying is if you do it right you don't necessarily have to invest an incredible amount of time to get something out of your garden yeah and you you may find that you know as time goes on, you, some of those things you're doing, you may be less inclined to want to do them anyway because you're getting something out of the gardening that, uh, you know, that that replaces that. I mean, I, I, I use a, a yoga class as an example. You know, if I were to take yoga, I would have to drive about half an hour to take the yoga class, and then I'd have to do the yoga class, which I'd have to pay money to do. Mm-hmm. Then I'd have to drive home. So that would be two hours Yeah. as opposed to just going in my backyard for... 15 minutes, you know, uh, and doing what needs to be done there. And and if I want to spend more time, I can, um, but, uh, it's peaceful, it's tranquil, it's, you know, it's exercise. Um, so, I mean, you may find that it, it sort of drives a process within you that you begin to start uncomplicating your life. You can't use your um, you know, what, what do we call it? What's the term we use? Your Android or your smartphone. Or your, <laughs> yeah. You can't use that while you're gardening. It has to go in your back That's pocket true. at the you very can, least. You can listen to the show while you're gardening, though. That's kind of cool. <laughs> but yeah, you, yes. uh, you're right. Yeah. You, you, have to, you have to be focused on what you're doing. Your hands are dirty. Yeah, you're, you're, your <laughs> you're in there, dirty. you know. And uh, uh, so it seems to be something that, you know, our grand parents I don't know, maybe your parents my parents were not in the gardening but it, it seems to be something that was just totally common not that long ago so how you know how do we get away from it so quickly and you know is it maybe coming back or is there a way that it can come back for most people they can come back for anyone if they just decide to do if they have Take land the you gotta have land right <laughs> you know you can have an apartment with a deck and you can put something in a pot and that's you can do that but yeah um and that's great um but it's probably not going to give you a lot of exercise <laughs> um, right. Right. but if you own land um you can just decide today to to have mm-hmm. a garden but you know i i think i think one of the main reasons i'm into it is because i had it when i was growing up it's burned into me i like fishing because i went fishing as a child right, right. i like gardening because there was always a garden when i was a child i was out in the backyard when my when my, my parents were doing it mm-hmm. and it's just something i was around it's sort of in me i like being out in the woods because i was out in the woods a lot as a child right and i think our generation and subsequent ones were probably the first generation where the parents didn't do that their grandparents did it 
and a lot, like a lot of my friends, some of their parents did it, some of their some of their parents didn't. But then if you went just a generation, ten years, people that are ten years younger than me, way mm-hmm. less of them, because you mm-hmm. got. You know, dual income families. Right. You know, everybody has to work so hard. There's all this stuff we have to have. Mm. It's uh, you know, it's expensive. You know, like uh, just just raising children is expensive. Right. All that sort of stuff. There's all these activities everybody's supposed to be in, and just got out of doing it. So children aren't aren't exposed to it when they're right. growing up, and so they don't have this need. Almost like I would I would you know, it's almost like a salmon wanting to go back. Right to where the stream it came from you're trying to get something that yeah. it really does connect you with that childhood feeling mm-hmm. of wonder and innocence mm-hmm. and you're watching things grow and there's bees and there's birds and it's just it's so simple right it's so uncomplicated it, it happens when you want it to happen but you're also right. passive you know like yeah. it's it's just a different sort of thing and it's so nice to just go and unplug um right i don't know how we got away from it but it's obvious you drive around any neighborhood and just look around and look for the sure. gardens. Sure. Even if there is a garden, it's tiny and it might yeah. have like oregano and basil and parsley and it's not even yeah. a food garden. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, you know, I don't know how we get out of it other than just we started, cons- became consumers. Right. Right. We stopped being people that did things. And it's just, it's just a general systemic change in our culture, in North American culture. Mm-hmm. We stopped doing things for ourselves, and I'm not judging that. Yeah. I'm part of it, too. Yeah. Um, but we started just being consumers. You have a job, you make right. money, and you use that money to purchase goods. Things. Instead of just, you know, like, I'm, I'm fortunate. This is an example. I'm fortunate. I live, uh, fortunate or unfortunate, depending on how you look at it, I live about 20 minutes from the nearest hardware store. I break the handle on my shovel. It's going to take me about an hour to get another handle. Right. I got to drive there. I got to buy it. I got to drive back. I got to put it on the or an, or another shovel. Right. It's actually easier for me to just cut down a tree that's about the right size and make it. And if you look at both my sure. shovels, sure. Uh, yeah. they have like tree handles. Yeah. Um, you know, I can I can put a handle on a shovel in about fifteen minutes. Why on earth? And it's free. And, and you didn't go pay twenty dollars. Yeah. For it. yeah. Um, anyway, we've gotten away from that whole moment. Yeah. I'm re- rediscovering it just for, yeah. by virtue of living somewhere where I can't right. go and buy stuff. I've started just doing things, and I realize there's a lot mm-hmm. of things you can do that it's right. actually cost effective for me. Um, and gardening is certainly one of those things. Um, people have a value for um, organic food, fresh food, mm-hmm. local food, buy local. Yeah. yeah. What's fresher or you more like, more local or organic yeah. food right now? What's fresher or more local or more organic than the that more guaranteed organic yeah. because you're the you know than right. the stuff you grew in your own yard? Yeah. Sometimes I think organic is a trademark. It is. It's a pitch. You know. It's a. Well, there's all these rules around it, but even mm-hmm. you know, it's sort of like this percentage, certain parts per million, uh, can't be yeah. this or that in the right. soil. Well, it, right. it, in my garden, it's like it's it's the soil that was there, yeah. and horse manure, and the you know the grass and right. wood chips and stuff I throw yeah. on it. It's organic. There's right. nothing right. there that gotcha. isn't organic. So even if you don't have land, I, I've noticed in the last few years there's more and more of these community gardens yeah. popping up, like even in downtown Halifax here. And even in uh, Bridgewater, where I live, there's community gardens. So I guess you don't necessarily have to have, you know, your own land to get involved to some degree. But, you know, obviously, if you have if you have a, a backyard with any space at all, uh, you know, why not turn into a garden? I know it's impossible to keep my grass green, so I might as well have a garden there. Well, it's the thing that all the grass does does is it takes. It, it yeah. gives you nothing. It just takes, you yeah. know, like you had takes gasoline. It takes oil. Mm-hmm. It takes chemicals. Yes. Yeah. It takes time. Yeah. Just to feed the cinch bugs that I have going on. <laughs> uh, but, so, yeah. yeah, so that's... Yeah, that's... those community gardens are also a great uh, yeah. great resource. Uh, you know, uh, I went to uni- university in... Uh, I'm from Nova Scotia. I went to university in Hamilton, Ontario. And the whole time I was there, I said, oh, God, I wish I had a garden. And the year I left, I realized there was a community garden <laughs> right, 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 right down the road. <laughs> and I could have had, like... In Hamilton, the conditions there right. are, like, the valley, but better. Yeah. And it's, quite the, it's kind of strange the place is, you know, kind of seen as this big industrial center. But it's, it's right. like an oasis. It's sure. a valley. Sure. Um, sure. So uh, it's a great place to grow things. Awesome. But, what else we got there on our little to-do list for this first episode? So one thing I want to do, you know, for this whole series is just define the term gardening first, because it's it's useful for people to understand what we're talking about um, and frame that discussion. When I'm using the term gardening, I'm talking about food gardening. I'm not talking about 
flowers and, mm-hmm. and things like that. There's, I don't think there's a need for any more on that. Mm-hmm. Um, you can listen to various radio shows and stuff like that to get sure. advice on how to make your tulips more tulipy and your azaleas more, um, mm-hmm. you know, colorful. Um, this is about food gardening. The, the side benefit, I guess, is that whatever, you know, vegetables are the hardest thing to grow. Um, so whatever works, you know, if right. you're good at this, you're good at the, right. I mean, I have, right. I have flowers and things like that on my it property. Kind of spills over. Their flowers are, and for the most part, they're weeds that we like to look at. Um, so sure. same sure. with herbs for that matter. So sure. they're very easy to grow. They're, they're, they, they need way less in my experience gotcha. anyway than vegetables. Um, they need, they don't need the kind of soil. Vegetables need great soil and it all starts with the soil. Um, so when I'm talking about gardening, you know, let's define that. What is gardening? The way it's sort of seen right now is like as a pastime or a hobby or an exercise in, in frugality, a way to save money. Um, and, I, you know, it is all of those things, a uh, way to get outside, something to do. Um, but I would define it more broadly as an investment. It's an investment that because you put something into it and you get something out. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, it is a pastime and it, it does serve that purpose, but, you know, collecting stamps, you don't get to like eat your stamp collection or if you're collecting, uh, you know, if you're a civil war reenactor, you don't get to sure. eat musket balls or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get to do right. that. Um, right. whereas with this, I mean, you put a bit of time in, um, there's, you know, some money, but we'll talk about that in subsequent sure. episodes. Sure. It doesn't have to be a lot really. It looks yeah. that way, but it doesn't. Yeah. And of course you need some space You need a space to do it. But I mean, you're going to get back food you're going to get back you know you get out in the sun you get some vitamin d you're going to get some exercise you're going to get healthy it's a way to great thing that if you have children it's a great sure. thing to do with your children um it'll get ingrained in them they love uh, you know digging for potatoes and sure. looking at all the bugs and stuff like that it's, yeah. it's like a biology lesson for them there's always stuff mm-hmm. to learn you're always learning every season i i fail at something i succeed at something and i learn more right um you get the economic benefits you get the nutritional value of the food, you get to unplug, you know, mm-hmm. just to break from all that. You're, right. you're benefiting the environment, um, your stress levels go down, peace, and you get, and I've actually done the numbers on this, um, just in terms of money, the money you save on groceries. Season one, you can get a return on investment with with a garden. Season, awesome. I mean, you're not going to get a return investment right. if you plant a, a, an oregano garden. Um, unless you eat, unless a, lot you of eat a lot of oregano. <laughs> we eat a lot of oregano in this house. Um, but I mean, if you plant things that you like to eat, and that's what you should plant. Don't plant like things that other... Plant the things you like to eat. That will grow here in well in Nova Scotia. Mm-hmm. Um, then you'll get uh, something as simple as you know, a pack of kale and to buy one meal's worth of kale at the grocery store. It's like three, four dollars. Yeah. And a pack of kale seeds costs a buck ninety nine. Um, and you, you could plant like with that. And I just did this the other day. You can plant, um, you know, a, a four by 12 garden bed with that one thing of seeds. Really? And on top of that, you have to thin them out. Like that's more seeds than you yeah. can use there. Like yeah. you sort of kill the weak ones and yeah, keep yeah. the strong ones um so you get kale from like end of may till probably november give right. depending on the kind of fall yeah. you have yeah. um, here in halifax um you know the winter doesn't really come till late right um so you've got kale like sometimes even till christmas it depends on the actual microclimate that exists on awesome. your property um so that's an investment i can't define it any other way there's inputs the and I can't think of one investment that turns around that well. I've got like GICs and no. mutual funds and, geez, I tried the stock market once. That no. was a disaster. Um, Everybody's but, out to take from you, not... You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's the best kind of investment. You know, you park the money and then you have all this anxiety about what's going to turn around. Mm-hmm. Well, you put an apple tree in the ground, you spend like $40 on it and you've got apples for the rest of your life. That's true. <laughs> you know? That's true. Or like all, any perennial like that. Sure. You know, my... Uh, asparagus and my rhubarb and my straw i spent ten dollars on strawberries um three years ago and i've got i don't have to buy strawberries i've got strawberry i've got a variety that produces right up until the fall so i've got like strawberries all summer long a bowl a week and tons of them in the so i mean that's a ten dollars and i've probably got about three hundred dollars worth of strawberries out of that a year so you're eating way more strawberries than you normally eat yeah so yeah, it's it's an investment with all these benefits. All these benefits. The benefits of exercise, the benefits of a hobby, the benefits of a pastime, yeah. but also the benefits of like an actual economic activity. Mm. Um, so it, it appeals to me on all those levels. You know, it's got a 
it's got to give back. Sure. You know, makes total sense. I mean, I've never gotten back from fi- I love fishing. I've never gotten back the money. I've never caught like, <laughs> no, you know, $5,000 worth of trout. <laughs> <laughs> never, no. And if you did, yeah, I feel kind of bad. Yeah, it's a lot of exactly, trout, man. <laughs> exactly. No, that's fascinating. I mean, and so just real quick, the, the show is designed to kind of encompass the entire maritime. So I know there's different zones for gardening. So things the, you know, the way the gardening season here is on the Atlantic coast, Nova Scotia, fairly similar to New Brunswick. Yeah. 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 So hopefully this will, you know, uh, everything that, that we'll be talking about on this, this series will apply, you know, all over the maritime. We're basically zone five, but from year to year, can, there's five A, five B, and there's four and there's six. And there's some years where it, the province behaves like a zone six and there's mm-hmm. some years where it's more like a zone five last year right. it was like a zone <laughs> terrible um <laughs> i never seen anything like last year yeah. um but uh yeah and the reason i actually how we how we connected what i was i was yeah. looking for a, a some sort of online resource to discuss gardening here you know because locally yeah, yeah. locally because I, I watch a lot of things on youtube and it's mm-hmm. like they're doing something. I'm like, oh, that's mm-hmm. great. Then I realized they're gardening in Georgia. Well, right. I can't do that. That does not going to work for me. Exactly. Um, so there was a need for talking about how do we grow, you know, this vegetable or that. When should it go in? You know, yeah. am I putting it in too early? Am I putting it mm-hmm. in too late? You know, mm-hmm. there's so many different things that some things can go in way earlier than you think. Right. And some things should probably go in a little bit later than you think. Um, so, yeah. Nice. I well, I'm, I'm looking forward to learning, uh, you know, learning lots from from what you know and uh and i'm sure everybody else will be too so you know the other thing we want to accomplish with this show is to you know introduce people to a way of gardening that is i would say easier than what you probably have in your mind as a way of gardening right um, the way i grew up you know watching uh, my father in the garden is you know every fall he'd rent a rototiller from the hardware store and rototill the soil he put you know, this, you know, he'd get his soil tested at the agricultural college and he'd put this fertilizer on. And then once everything was growing and he'd lime it, and then once things were growing, he'd put this white powder on everything and you know, all this sort of stuff. And there was mm-hmm. constant weeding, weeds everywhere. Right. And it's just really complicated, backbreaking, difficult thing to do. And especially, I would say, we probably the most. Our society is probably the most sedentary it's ever been in, in the history of uh, ever. Well, yeah, um, I mean, someone like me, especially, I remember watching my grandfather do this. It's really hard. I never once said, yeah, I'd like to do that. <laughs> you know. It's like you did all that and yeah. you got some carrots. Get it. I'll just go buy them. You exactly. know? And you can buy that stuff pretty cheap at the grocery. Although yeah. I would say when you grow your own, and I'm yeah. sure there's some placebo effect, but right. it does taste. Because, I mean, the varieties you're growing are, are going to, they, they've been selected for flavor, not for shelf life mm-hmm. and, and, you know, appearance. They're, mm-hmm. they're selected for taste. So if you grow your own stuff, it's going to taste better. Um, so, yeah, that's what I seem to recall. And that's the way I gardened for, for years when I go back into it. And then uh, one day I just, you know, usually around March, you know, I start getting the itch mm-hmm. for the next season and I start looking for things to watch. I'll go on YouTube or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I just watched this uh, video where the guy was talking about this approach to gardening called permaculture. And, and you know, we're going to have a whole episode on this. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just, the basic concept it is the guy says, look at the forest. Who's watering that? Who's fertilizing that? Who's weeding? No one is. And everything's growing great. Things still grow. Look at the ditch on the side of the road. Look at everything life to growing out of it, you know. Yeah. Um, all you have to do is look at that and think about it for a little while and start copying that design in right. your garden. And, you know, the garden will take care of itself. I'll give a perfect example. Um, in my driveway, I have wood stacked in my driveway and I got one side of the driveway that is against the side of the house that faces south and it's all gravel and i've always got weeds there a year after year after year there's weeds on the gravel and i'm always trying to get rid of the weeds and then one day you know i've been doing permaculture for a while i just said wait a second like i'm not thinking right the nature's trying to tell me it wants the like, things no matter how many times i kill what's growing there and it's growing in gravel mm-hmm. that's a great place for things to grow i'm going to put a garden there and all I did, I'm, I'm telling you, all I did was, and I, but I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to have to weed it. Right. So I put herbs there 
It's a little garden that's probably about two and a half feet by ten feet long. And I put perennial herbs there, like oregano and parsley, close mm-hmm. to the kitchen, right? Mm-hmm. It's perfectly positioned, nice. right? And uh, I put those herbs there. I put uh, um, some newspaper down to smother out all the weeds. So I put newspaper all around. And I put a little border around it. And I put three inches of sand, like the kind of sand you use for a septic yeah. field. You can get it 30 bucks for a yard. Yeah. I put sand down. So it's a desert. <laughs> Nothing grows there. Like the only thing that grows there is the things that were that I put in, right? Yeah. I mean, it's weedless. I haven't touched it yet this year. It's just this sandy desert, and there's parsley, sage, oregano. It's all growing awesome. right now. It's growing beautifully. You'll have to take a picture. Yeah. And we'll, uh, we'll post that out. <laughs> um, that's, that's permaculture. That's, you know, yeah. I mean, it's an example. Um, there's, there's so many different ways to go about it. It's not one thing. And if you watch, you know, if you, if you start watching video on it on, on YouTube, it seems very complicated. The mm-hmm. guys that talk about it tend to use a lot of big words. Right, right. And it's just like, just look at nature. Think a little while, copy. Yeah. There's one thing human beings are good at. We're copying. Yeah, you see right. a spider's web, you say, hey, I can kill a lot of fish using that that's same, right. you know, we copy things. Yeah. You see a lightning that makes a fire, that looks that like useful looks stuff, you know. We're good at copying. So, I mean, look at the thing that does growing the best, nature. It does it all on its own. It's yeah. untended. And try to develop your garden in a way that's going to do that. Awesome. So we're going to talk about that because I yeah. think it's the way to, it's going to make your garden so much easier. It's I, The year I switched to permaculture, I had the most productive garden i ever had hmm. and i never touched a hose nice. from like some some point in june and once once everything's up once all your plants are about three inches high um the roots are deep enough and you've got a, some sort of cover that keeps the sun off your soil yeah. um it just takes care of it so you just go out and get it's a grocery store it's that, a sounds like, that sounds like my kind of garden you just right go there. out and take stuff you know yeah yeah no that's wicked um you know, have a beer while you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Coffee definitely, or whatever. <laughs> definitely. Uh, you know, we'll we'll try and uh, share some photos as well with with uh, with this episode. It'd be neat to have have a picture of what you got going on there now. And uh, yeah, perfect. I think that that's uh, that about wraps up this the the length of this intro episode for sure. That's awesome. Good information. A good start, Greg, with us. Great. And. Um, we appreciate you uh, tuning in. And again, if you want to follow along or check the show notes out, just go to maritimegardening.com slash 001. And uh, also, we have abilities built into the website so that you can subscribe by email to be notified of upcoming episodes. We're going to try and uh, we're going to try and do this on a weekly basis. Um, you know, this is a you know, very much a part time uh effort for both of us so you know there may be the occasional week where we slip here and there but that's the intent so by all means subscribe to the email just uh, fill out the little email uh, form on the site or the one that pops up just put your email in there and you'll be notified you can also subscribe uh, hopefully by the time this goes live on itunes uh, or any of the other podcast networks so We appreciate you listening, and um, thank you. We'll we'll, uh, see you in the next episode.